Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. If you want to be jewelry care designer, one of the things that you cannot avoid is twisting element. Today, I would like to show you how to create this twist wire earring and have a bezel set on the tip of the prong. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we start it, let's talk about this structure right here. Type of a setting is no different than regular the prong setting. You just need to calculate it right, not to bend this bezel too much. So that way you won't deform it and in order to setting the stone there. So that's starting from the scratch. You can download the stone at the description below. There's a newsletter you can sign up and you will get a link for this stone. So basically this stone is about five millimeter. If that's too big and then you can arrange it. So I'm going to stay with five and I'm going to starting an arc, simply snapping into the zero and roughly going to go from here to here and you do not want it to bottom to touching the tip of your coolant because the stone will jamming into it. I do want it to make them a bit longer though so I wanted to make sure that it is something going like this and then uh, the same thing it's going to mirror to the other side so we're going to mirror from here snapping to the zero like this. Let's go ahead to join all this piece together and I would like to rebuild them to turn them into one piece. So I'm gonna turn them into, let's say, last point is always better and we wanna do seven point and turn on the control point. If you feel like this is way too close, uh, we can actually have them go wider by picking up all those points right here and we just want the scale up something like this. All right, if you feel like you want a button to be wider or deeper, you can pick up those two points and have them go lower or something like this. Okay, so now we have this piece. Uh, we are going to do the twist. Let's go ahead to pick up uh, this curve and use the commands for length and to know how long they are if we flatten it. So I'm going to copy that number right here on the top and we're just gonna draw a straight line with the polyline command and I'm just gonna Pass the number 9.819 and holding my shift to know this length right there. Now I have this length. I simply just going to draw few circle there. So one, it's going to snapping into this endpoint and to decide how big of that circle is going to be. And this is will be part of our pattern. I'm going to move in this one. A little bit off and simply just using the polar array command and then with that command I'm going to snapping into this endpoint right here and for three of them 360 degree and I'll get something like that. You can record a history if you want to and you can kind of moving around if you feel like it's too close to each other or something like that. All right, so if you like this pattern, let's go ahead to pick up everybody and we wanted to trim off everything inside and let's go ahead to join it together. Okay, so now we have this one. We just need to turn them into the solid. So I'm going to use the solid command that you have an extruded planar curve and we don't need to have a both sides. So both sides equal no and we're gonna snapping into this one right here. All right, so how are we going to twist this is quite simple. We're going to come into the transform command. You have a once for twist and snapping into the endpoint right here. And we kind of need to do a test first. I'm going to first pick up the axis and we are going to come in back to the right view and say one, two, and three. You have to physically turn in your mouse three turn and click enter and then you will get something like this. If this is something that you like, you can go ahead to use it. If it is too much twist, you don't like it, you can change it. Notice that two in right here, it's more, a little bit more flat. If you wanted to go all the way, we can do one more time. I'm going to snapping into here at the end point, the end point, and on the top right here, infinity is equal no. If I click infinity is equal yes, and I'm going to do the same one, two and three, then I will have it all the way to the end. Okay, so if that worked for you, let's take a look on 
how we're going to move this piece and bend it over to here. So we are going to use a flow command. We're going to pick up this curve, hit enter, pick up one of the end. Before you click on the target curve, you want to record a history and then you click on the target right here. And so you will get something like that. Take a look on the um, way to connect to the stone. If this is too much to cutting into the stone, you can actually moving this piece up and down to get it more cutting more or cutting less by moving this piece up and down. All right. If that position look okay to you, we are going to coming over here to creating the stone setting for on the prong. I'm going to pick up my stone, move it to the side with the gumball, hit the all key and make them smaller by 3D scale. And I want to have a stone roughly like this size. With this size of a stone, if I'm going to make a setting, I simply just need to make a tube and snapping into the center of a stone. Now there's nothing to snap because it's mesh, but we can uh, turn on the vertex on the old snap and snapping right there. I need to have it a little bit bigger and coming into the center roughly about this size and kind of bring it down here. You don't need to have it like super tall, but you want to make sure that it's not super giant too. Let's take a look on this. We can simply just group it this one and I would like to move this into the top of my uh, prong and see how that work. Moving this one up and see how that work there. All right. So if that look okay to you, we wanted to do some bevel edges and also filler edges to make it a little bit nicer. So let's go ahead to use the filler first. We want to have a small radius, let's say maybe 0.2 and have something like this. I feel like 0.2 is still too big in this case. So let's try 0.1 there to cut it in half. And to make your stone look nicer, you always want to bevel the edges more like a bright cut in the real scenario. And I wanted to have a 0 0.05 here for interior and we'll get something like this. All right, so it will look more finished. And you can have this one on the bottom to be rounded as well. So it will look better on the rendering. So I'm going to do 0 0.1 as well right there. Okay, now if everything look okay to you, we simply just need to have this one to mirror to the other side by using the command for mirror and to have something like this. All right, so that is one prong there. We also need others. So let's go ahead to pick up the all the, the twisting wire and also the two stone set there. And I simply gonna use the rotate command. So every 60, degree, I want to make a copy and 120 degree, I want to make another copy. So we'll have something like this. Double make sure this is what you want. The rest of it is for the rendering purpose. You do want to put the post right there, but for the casting, you probably don't want to put the post. You want to solder the post later on. We want to have an 11 millimeter right there. That's for the standard size. And I'm going to bring it right close to the middle. Simply just going to pipe it for the size in diameter for 20 gauge, which is 0.81. Uh, in in the diameter and hit enter. So then we'll have this one right there. You can have selecting the pipe you have and we want to center align set to the center and just type it zero. And so that will be the center. All you need to do is moving back. A lot of the time in the render, if you want to be more detailed, I will suggest you to draw maybe uh, just a small circle right here, roughly about one and a half millimeter from the bottom. And then you want to draw a small circle like this. And basically for this circle, I simply wanted to make it into the donut shape. So on the top view, we're going to use the revolve command, snapping into the zero for 360 degree, and we'll have that donut shape. And what we wanted to do is using a Boolean different, this one out of this one. So it felt like an ear nut uh, will stop it right there. And that will be our earring today. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, I have a lot more to show you. Sign up for the newsletter. The link is in the description below. I will send you a lot of free stuff with the discount code for my course whenever it is available. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.